Hi, it's Dwyer. It is January the 21st, 2020. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk boxing, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Well, if you haven't guessed, I'm moving here in the background. It's kind of throwing me off my game a little bit. I haven't really been able to have the time to make the videos I want to make, but I'll get back in the saddle eventually. Let's talk about the heavyweight division. Now, I made an earlier video where I just flatly said that the people in power in the heavyweight division are trying to freeze out Oleksandr Usyk. Now, forget what I'm saying here online. Take it from the horse's mouth since I made that video. Lineal champion, and folks, he's the lineal. Tyson Fury has announced that he's only going to have three more fights. Deontay Wilder, Anthony Joshua, and Dylan White. <laughs> Think about it. Wilder, Joshua, Dylan White. Right? I believe that Fury, at his best, is the best heavyweight on the planet. I believe Fury himself has doubts as to whether or not he could get back to that plateau, get back to where he was. Well, he's not going to take any chances on his legacy. He obviously feels that these three guys, Wilder, Joshua, and Dylan White, are less dangerous than former undisputed cruiserweight champion Usyk. Let me say too that we do look at eras in the heavyweight division, right? We'll overlook the fact that both Usyk and Fury are roughly the same age. They're both in their 30s, right? But we associate Fury with an older era, don't we? With beating Vladimir Klitschko, who's no longer active in the sport, right? We view Fury as part of this current era, right? Involving people like Deontay Wilder, and I view that as a very easy fight for Fury, if Fury is still Fury. Deontay Wilder, Anthony Joshua, and I view that as a very easy fight for Fury, if Fury is still Fury. And Dylan White, and I view that as a very easy fight for Fury, if Fury is still Fury. Let's face it, Wilder is in the Hall of Fame, in my opinion, already, right? You cannot be heavyweight champion for five years and have a record that showcases chaos, right? Every guy he has faced every guy has either hit the canvas in the fight or been stopped, right? I believe the only guy who wasn't stopped, right, in their original fight or the rematch in Wilder's entire career is his next opponent, Tyson Fury, right? Bermain Stavern went the distance with Wilder, did not make it out of the first round in the rematch, now, in the moment, I think we sense Wilder is limited, right? He's not even a gifted body puncher. The left hand, he has a jab with the left, but it's not the kind of jab that keeps you on the outside. His jab's too long. It doesn't have sting. Foot movement and Wilder don't belong in the same sentence, Right? A coordinated big heavyweight who can move. Who can move away from Wilder's straight right hand up top and who can actually force Wilder to box is going to win, I would say, 100% of the rounds that don't have knockdowns. You could say 80%, 90%, whatever. But he's going to win a bulk of those. Anthony Joshua, let's face it, his record against Andy Ruiz is 1-1. One and one. Andy just doesn't have the foot speed, right? 
you understand that that's a unique situation. Anthony Joshua doesn't have the back foot skills to be on his back foot in a fight against a Tyson Fury. Fury, of course, does. Fury could beat Joshua just like he beat Vladimir Klitschko. Right? Let's also face it, too. Joshua's defensive skills in the pocket are lacking. That's why he ran as much as he did against Andy Ruiz. Right? He didn't want to trade in the pocket. He didn't want to draw a line in the sand. He understood he couldn't. He didn't have the defensive skills to do so. How many times was he knocked down by Andy Ruiz in their first fight? Something like four. Right? Dylan White drops Anthony Joshua in that amateur film that's all over YouTube. And he's up on his toes and he's moving as he does it. Right? Dylan White has one of the best sticks in the game. Dylan White has a nickname, Mike McCallum's nickname, the body snatcher, that you really have to be a gifted body puncher to even borrow, right? It would be like me borrowing Sugar Ray Robinson's name, calling myself Sugar Ray Leonard, right? Or, you know, Sugar Mosley, right? You really have to be gifted to lift the, lift, to lift the nickname. But let's be serious. If he's in against a big man who can move, he's not going to get to Tyson Fury's body. You understand that. If he's in against a guy who can move, that jab's not going to land. Right, so, Tyson Fury understands boxing history. He knows. Lennox Lewis saw enough of Vitaly Klitschko to understand he didn't want to fight him again. He understood. Lennox Lewis understood. He couldn't hang around the sport, actively avoiding Vitaly Klitschko, right, on a fight that ended with a cut, right, that Lewis was struggling in, right? Lewis does make adjustments. I'll agree. Lewis starts looping his punches. I'll agree. It's a spirited fight. But understand, that was Lewis's last fight. He saw the writing on the wall. He saw the next wave. He thought to himself, you know what? I've beaten the Vander Holofield. I've beaten Mike Tyson. Right? I've beaten Vitaly Klitschko. What am I doing hanging around here? So let me just say, I want the boxing press to press these guys. Right? It's, it's absurd that Wilder hasn't fought Dylan White, although I have to say he has historical cover because Dylan White's drug tests, let's face it, that's been an adventure. Right? My point to you is that none of these guys, Fury, Wilder, Joshua, want to deal with Usyk. Understand, Usyk right now is a mandatory for Joshua. Joshua understands there's more money fighting the Fury Wilder winner than there is fighting Usyk, right? Let me change gears. I see that Jaime Mungia recently moved up to middleweight. I see that Jason Rosario Beat J-Rock Williams in Williams' backyard for the 154-pound title. Let's be real, folks. These guys are the same person, aren't they? In other words, Jaime Mangia was oversized for 154 pounds, wasn't he? Wasn't his game really being too big for his opponent and hitting hard for the division? Right? Jaime Munguia, I know he's very well connected, has great promoters, right? You're going to see a lot of him. He's not defensively blessed. It's too late for him to become defensively blessed, right? If you don't learn defense early, if you fall into a habit of just coming in and trying to knock out your opponents and loading up on every punch, if that's your game, and you don't know how to get out of the way of punches. 
you're going to have problems. So, I expect matchmakers to make sure that Munguia doesn't face a highly skilled boxer for at least his first few fights at 160 pounds. Right? If you look at his films, you're going to notice that if a fighter can block Munguia's punches, and understand, Munguia's had some questionable decisions go his way. Right? I know he's unbeaten. Let's say he's unbeaten with some questionable decisions. If a fighter can block Munguia's shots, that fighter's going to find out that Munguia is naked. Right? The dangerous part for Munguia is at the end of an exchange. Right? This is a heavy-handed hooker guy who's gotten by on size. Who's not really refined as a boxer. Now, it worked at 154. He was bigger than other guys. I don't think it's going to work at 160. If you're a gambler and you're looking for a fighter with a great record, who might be a little bit over height, look at Jaime Munguia. Right? If he steps in the ring with the hitman, Jamal Charlo, right? If he steps in the ring with Matt Karaboff, if he steps in the ring with Andre, I think he gets a loss. Jason Rosario, let me take this moment to congratulate Samson Lefkowitz. He's an excellent manager. Excellent. Right, this is a guy who gets his fighters big fights, and they pulled it off. Right, he drops Julian Williams. Williams gets up. Right, let me also say this too. When you hit a guy, and the guy loses his balance, and he's trying to hold on to you as if you're his girlfriend, right, and when you take a step back, you don't throw another punch, you take a step back, and he falls to the canvas. Folks, context matters. That's not a slip. That's, that's a knockdown. Let's not have the precedent where a guy who's hurt just decides he's going to hold you long enough so that when he falls down because he still doesn't have his balance, we're then going to say, oh, you know what? That, that wasn't a knockdown. There was no punch. Folks, you can have a delayed reaction to a punch. When Williams hits the canvas, that's a knockdown. 